Assalamu alaikum dear students. Today's program is about S block elements. The elements are classified into S, P, D and F block on the basis of their electronic configuration. In S block elements, the outermost shell is filled with two electrons at the most. This S block elements consist of group 1A and group 2A. Because of their similarity in the number of valence electrons, they tend to resemble in their chemical properties. Hence, the elements of group 1A, lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium possess one electron each and tend to resemble in their chemical properties. While the elements of group 2A, beryllium, magnesium, calcium, strontium, barium, and radium have two electrons in their outermost shell and have similar chemical properties. These alkali metals and alkaline earth metals are very reactive elements and therefore do not occur in free state in nature. However, the compounds of these elements are widely occur in nature. Let's see some important and common minerals of these elements. Common minerals of some alkali metals. Element is lithium. Minerals are spodiumin, amliconite, and lepidolite. Sodium. Minerals are rock salt, chili saltpeter, torna, and natron. Element potassium. Mineral are carnalite and sulvite. Cesium, a mineral is pilocyte. Now we will see some common minerals of alkaline earth metals. Beryllium, alkaline earth metal. Mineral is beryl. Magnesium, magnesite, dolomite, asbestos, and epsom salt. Calcium, mineral are calcite or limestone and gypsum. Strontium, strontianite. Barium, barite and witherite. Now dear student, let's compare alkali metals with alkaline earth metals. First we will see their similarities. Both alkali metals and alkaline earth metals are S block elements with electronic configuration having electrons of both the families in the S orbitals or the valence shell. Both alkali metals and alkaline earth metals being strongly electropositive have great chemical reactivity. Both alkali metals and alkaline earth metals are reactive and do not occur in the free state in nature. Both alkali metals and alkaline earth metals are prepared by electrolysis of their fused chlorides. The hydroxides of both families are strong bases. Although alkaline earth metal hydroxides are sparingly soluble in water. Now we will see their differences. Alkali metals have one electron in the S orbitals of their valence shell, while alkaline earth metals have two electrons in S orbitals of their valence shell. The oxides and hydroxides of alkaline earth metals are more covalent and less basic than those of alkali metals. The alkaline earth metals have higher melting and boiling points than those of alkali metals. The heat of hydration for alkaline earth metals ions are higher than those of alkali metals. The atomic and ionic radii of alkaline earth metals are much smaller than the corresponding alkali metals. The alkaline earth metals are less metallic than alkali metals due to the smaller atomic size. Dear students, these are the some similarities and differences. Now, Professor Shabir will tell us more about their chemical and physical properties. Alkali metals are soft and they can be cut with a knife. For example, sodium is one of the alkali metals 
and it can be cut with a knife. Whereas alkaline earth metals cannot be cut with a knife. For example, magnesium is an alkaline earth metal and it cannot be cut with a knife. This shows that alkali metals are less dense than alkaline earth metals. Alkali metal hydroxides are more basic as compared to alkaline earth metal hydroxides. We can check the nature of their hydroxides by taking a solution of alkali metal hydroxide in one beaker and a solution of alkaline earth metal hydroxide in an other beaker. When we dip litmus paper in both the solution, this is a neutral litmus paper in both the solutions, we can check the pH of these two solutions by comparing it with a pH paper. Alkali metal hydroxide, its pH matches with this color, that is, uh, its pH is approximately 13. Whereas, the second solution, which was alkaline earth metal hydroxide, its pH is around about 9 or, or 10. These two colors indicates that alkali metal hydroxides are more basic as compared to alkaline earth metal hydroxides. Alkali metal carbonates are water soluble, whereas alkaline earth metal carbonates are water insoluble. For example, I take one of the carbonates of alkali metals, that is sodium carbonate in a test tube. This is sodium carbonate and this sodium carbonate is water soluble. I will take calcium carbonate from alkaline earth metals and this calcium carbonate is water insoluble. You can see the difference between the solubility of the two carbonates. Uh, sodium carbonate, its solution is transparent, whereas in case of calcium carbonate, it has settled down at the bottom. So we can conclude that alkali metal carbonates are water soluble, whereas alkaline earth metal carbonates are water insoluble it has settled at the bottom. Carbonates of alkali metals, they do not decompose except lithium. Whereas, carbonates of alkaline earth metals, they decompose to give respective oxide and they evolve carbon dioxide. Alkali and alkaline earth metals differ in the solubility of their phosphates. Alkali metal phosphates except lithium are water soluble. Now add water in both the phosphates that is alkali metal phosphate and alkaline earth metal phosphate which is calcium phosphate shake both the compounds.
alkali metal phosphate is water soluble its solution is transparent whereas alkaline earth metal phosphate is insoluble and uh, it uh, settles down uh, at the water hence we can say that alkali metal sulfates are water soluble whereas alkaline earth metal sulfates except magnesium are water insoluble alkali metals for example when a small piece of sodium metal is added to water reaction takes place between sodium and water it forms sodium hydroxide and hydrogen gas is liberated sodium due to less density it floats over water but when a piece of magnesium metal is added into water no reaction takes place between magnesium metal and water magnesium reacts with water at high temperature when metals of group 1a r2a or their salts are heated on a flame or on a bunsen burner they impart certain color to the flame for example when sodium chloride is placed in a flame it imparts yellow color to the flame you can see yellow colors this is yellow color similarly another element of group 1a that is potassium it gives violet flame when placed of the flame elements of group 2a they also give flame test calcium it gives brick red colors out of uh, alkali metals sodium is the most representative element sodium is extracted from its compound the extraction of sodium is done from sodium chloride which is also called rock salt Sodium chloride is found in the form of rocks. Kevra mine is a big reservoir of rock salt. big tunnels are made for mining purposes this rock salt containing 95% of sodium chloride Usually some impurities are found in it which gives different colors. The big pyramids are found in the tunnels 
due to continuous dripping of concentrated sodium chloride. Concentrated brine solution has a particular viscosity. As sodium chloride is mainly obtained from rocks, therefore it contains impurities. In sodium chloride, two types of impurities are present. One type of impurities are those which are water soluble. Second type of impurities are those which are water insoluble. Water insoluble impurities are removed by dissolving rock salt in water. Insoluble impurities can be removed by filtration. I have taken sodium chloride after filtering it in a beaker. This solution of sodium chloride is saturated, but it also contains certain soluble impurities, which are mainly sodium sulfate, magnesium sulfate, calcium sulfate. These soluble impurities are removed by common ion effect. In this process, sodium chloride is taken in a round bottom flask, sulfuric acid concentrated is added by thistle funnel. Reaction between sodium chloride and sulfuric acid takes place. Hydrogen chloride gas is produced. That dry hydrogen chloride gas is passed through sodium chloride solution. So when hydrogen chloride gas is passed through saturated solution of NaCl, crystals of sodium chloride, they settle at the bottom. These are settling at the bottom. Whereas the impurities due to high solubility, these remain in the solution. In this way, sodium chloride can be purified by common ion effect. Let us see how this sodium is extracted from its compound that is sodium chloride. Most of sodium is produced by the electrolysis of fused sodium chloride. The electrolytic cell for the production of metallic sodium was designed by J.C. Downs. It is a circular furnace, the large block of graphite in the center is the anode, above which is a dome for the collection of chlorine. The cathode is a circular copper or iron which surrounds the anode, but is separated from it by an iron screen, which terminates in a gauze. It is filled with fused sodium chloride since the melting point of sodium chloride is about 800 degrees centigrade. Some calcium chloride is added because this lowers the melting point of the electrolyte and permits the furnace to operate at about 600 degrees centigrade. 
The arrangement permits the electric current to pass freely. Sodium metallizes in a special compartment from which it is withdrawn at intervals. Liquid sodium can easily be collected and chlorine can be collected from outlet hood. Dear student, this program was about elements of group 1A and group 2A which are S-block elements. See you in the next program. Allah Hafiz.